Welcome, welcome, as it is, it is I, on uh, on this day that we are meeting up very, very early, actually on Tuesday on a Tech 2, and it is uh, Empire Successful Friends. Why do I say it is a Tech 2? Because technology has been failing us, and I've been trying to connect with this lovely lady called Karen, and she is a successful friend of M5, and that is why she is sitting on that seat. And um, without wasting many a time, Karen, good morning, and welcome to M5 Successful Friends. Thank you, and thank you for having me. It's, uh, it's great to chat to you. And it's not that early for me, but I know it's early for you. <laughs> so thank you for having me early. <laughs> That's good stuff, yeah. So for some people that don't know, I'm just going to introduce Karen, who she is and how I came to know her. And um, as you all traditionally know, I've got a business in Five Property Addict, and we do a whole lot of business in the coastal lands in South Africa. Um, and we were trying to figure out how can we make money in our coastal lands with the student accommodation. And I stumbled upon Karen because Karen does um, Airbnb and she actually trains people for uh, I don't want to say for a living she's going to tell us her story but um, this is how I stumbled upon Karen I took a liking into her and she put me in into a team where she's got plenty of students and she's always talking about supporting people that are doing Airbnb and this is pretty rare not a lot of people do this and so I'm, I'm I am so stoked to be hearing Karen's story where she from and how come she started teaching other people because many are people, when they get to this stage, they want to keep all that information for themselves. Karen, without wasting time, um, you do Airbnb. Hmm. And yes, I do. Has this always been the case? Who are you? Where are you from? Well, I, I've always been in property, but not residential. I started off working in retail as shopping center management. Okay. So I worked for one of the biggest shopping, uh, one of the biggest property management companies in the country for a long time. And from shopping center management, that is actually how I stumbled across Airbnb. Because after working for a boss for a number of years and yeah. crossing the floor from working for the landlord to then working for one of the largest or the largest fashion retailer in the country in their property department, I decided to start my own business and do property consulting. And it was during this consulting time that I worked for a shopping center developer in Maputo in Mozambique. Oh yeah. And the client, the client was Portuguese and I enjoy learning new languages. So I decided to take a Portuguese language lessons. Right. And one of the ladies in my class was doing Airbnb and she told me about it. It was seven years ago. April, wow. April would be seven years ago. And so I thought so we, myself, we are in 2020 right now, and you're talking seven years ago, 2013. Yes. Right. Correct. Okay. And she told me about it, and I thought to myself, mm, all right, I've got a spare room in my house sitting there doing nothing. Let me put it on Airbnb and see what happens. Okay. And then seven years ago, nobody in South Africa knew about Airbnb, it was very, very new. Right. because it only officially launched in the country in, in 2015 and that was five years ago but then the first guest arrived and the second one and i just completely fell in love with hosting people from all over the world and cool. having done it now for seven years my portfolio has grown from one bedroom i enlarged my house i bought more property i rented more property i'm managing other people's property for them on airbnb so my portfolio has really grown really nicely in the last seven years and i decided well i looked at the i looked at the stats that airbnb released um, on hosts in south africa right and the average host in south africa earns approximately thirty thousand rand per year through airbnb wow. which is not even it's not even minimum wage and i thought to myself why 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 aren't people doing what i'm doing because i'm earning almost that on one property in one month and I decided, right? yeah, I'd earn almost that on my primary residence. Yeah. Uh, rent, renting out four of the five bedrooms. I live in the fifth mm -hmm. one and I live for free because Airbnb income pays for my living costs. 
and I decided to start doing workshops and teaching other people how to how to do it properly. Uh -huh. So let's let's go back, right? So you started off your journey, um, or should I say, sh sharing your story when you are actually working, and um, it looks like you are working now at a senior, very senior role. You're looking after um, uh, big big uh, uh, properties, shopping mall. I mean, not everyone can go and uh, manage a shopping mall. Uh, some of us we can't even manage a big room. Uh, um, yes, well, I think I think I've moved on from managing the shopping malls. I'm no longer right. doing that actively, but I'm doing right. consulting work for shopping center landlords. Right. If they want to expand the center or redo the tenant mix in the center, and then right. I also do work for retailers. So I help them with their property strategy, and help them find premises and negotiate their leases. Right. But Airbnb is really where my passion is. And it is through the property management that I found this. Yeah. And it is just so much fun. I love, uh, I love meeting people from everywhere. Nowadays, it's a very good mix 50-50 between local and international travelers. Right. Yeah. Um, and then also the students. I mean, it's so rewarding. It's, it's the most rewarding thing I've done ever uh, yeah. is doing these workshops. So Karen, let's go back, right? Um, what is your background before you even started doing property management? I mean, what did you study? Um, and was it just by fluke that you ended up being in property management? Was it intentional? Um, how did that journey start off from, 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 let me just say, from a young girl who was, let's say, in school um, to, to where you became the property manager for the first um, uh, shopping center. Uh, maybe share with us that transition. Okay. So it is so, it's so wonderful how the universe always conspires in your favor. Right. When I look back today, I can join the dots okay. and I can see how everything that happened happened in order to bring me to where I am today. But you know, whilst it's happening, you don't always know why things are happening the way they are. So I studied, I decided to study uh, public relations and marketing. Right. And in my final year, I had to do a practical year and I got a job as a marketing assistant for a shopping center called <laughs> The Bridge at Green Acres in Port Elizabeth. Okay. And I was doing marketing for a year and then I moved from that into shopping center management and I relocated to Gauteng. Right. And after managing a few shopping centers, um, I went into portfolio management where I was looking after uh, entire portfolios of shopping centers for landlords and, and had shopping center managers and staff reporting to me. Right. And then eventually I decided, well, I got an offer to go and work for one of the biggest fashion retailers in the country. And they were on a massive expansion plan at the time. Mm -hmm. So I crossed the floor from landlord to tenant and I became the tenant. Right. And that gave me tremendous opportunity to get to know different regions in the country, get to meet different developers um, and landlords. And it gave me so much, I gained so much experience that the next logical step was to go on my own and become a property consultant and no longer work for a boss. And, um, and it's through that that I stumbled across Airbnb because if I hadn't gone on my own, I wouldn't have worked for this developer in Mozambique and I wouldn't have stumbled across a, a lady in a Portuguese language class <laughs> to introduce me to Airbnb. Maybe it would have happened another way, but you know, can you join the dots the way that I've joined the dots now? Um, it, it's obvious. Not at all. Not at all. <laughs> Now, whilst you're in class, you're learning, you're learning something totally unrelated. And there is someone there who drops in the idea of actually this can be uh, a business. Or I don't know whether you are looking at it as a business at that time. But uh, I'm always telling people that, you know, you need to be networking all the time. And to me here, your, your winning recipe, you actually found it in a networking session where you're in a class and you're just talking stories, right? And, Correct. And there you are now, this person tells you about Airbnb. Very practically, 
how how did you how did you receive it and what was your baby steps in finding it out until you could actually comfortably let out your your spare room um not knowing whether you're married or you're not uh but will, I, I want us to talk about that because now you're bringing in a stranger in your house right uh but if we can cover that small little portion okay so I just had a look at the website and I just navigated myself around that and I made so many errors in the beginning oh. when I set up my listing. So I learned through trial and error. Right. Seven years ago, there wasn't somebody who could teach me how to get started immediately. Okay. And it is through that, you know, trying this, trying that, clicking this button and clicking that button and trying the one setting after the other. It's through that that I eventually navigated myself so well around the platform that I learned all, all the different tricks, how to optimize your listing and how to really get um, the most bookings out of it than, than what you can. When I first started on Airbnb, when I first listed my, yeah. my very, very first spare room, it took from the day that I listed it until the first guest arrived was six months. What? And I wasn't really very serious <laughs> about it then. And I wasn't relying on the extra income. So, you know, also I wasn't really that worried. Yeah. But um, once it gained momentum and once I learned the tricks around the, the platform, yeah. it really just snowballed from there. My most recent listing that I added to my portfolio from the day, the minute that I listed it until I got my, my first two confirmed bookings was only 12 hours. Wow. Because it's now seven years later. I know oh, all the yeah. little secrets. Right. I know what to do. I know how to set it up so that you can get started immediately. And I help my students to do exactly that. So this is the power, right? Um, so you get me excited here because um, one of my key things and that I'm always telling people is that in whatever you want to do, the first thing that you need to do is to get educated. And you've just covered all of that. Yes. Um, so there you are, you start something, you put a leg time of around about six months and there's no income because there was no education. You, you're trying Correct. to figure it out yourself. Right? If there was education then, oh boy, I would have, I would have gotten started much sooner. 100%. Um, the second thing that I'm always telling people is that, hey, maybe you need to get a coach, a support structure yes. of sort, right? And there you are now, you, you, you offer your training and you put a supporting structure for, for your students and things like that. Uh, because I'm one of your students, I can safely say that. Um, so you, you now learn how to list, well, today and 12, 12 hours later, you are actually making some money. We're easy. If we look back at when you started off, six months is a long time. I don't think mm -hmm. if it were me who had posted that, I think when that message of uh, booking would have come through, maybe I would have even caught in a surprise, like, what is this for? What's Airbnb? Um, mm -hmm. Because it could have moved on a long time ago. Um, so what, what is Airbnb for, for, the, for the really late for those, out there. <laughs> for those who have not used it to host or to or to travel i can tell you in a nutshell yeah you can advertise on airbnb on the airbnb platform you can advertise right. your spare room in your house your a, a room in an apartment that you own right. or the entire apartment or your beach house or a caravan on a camping site or a tent oh. or a or a cave Wow. There are so many, there are so many different property types on Airbnb that you can put your, your listing uh, um, under. So you can choose whatever it is that you want to rent out for, for accommodation purposes on Airbnb. You list it on the site right. and Airbnb advertises your accommodation for you. You don't have right. to put in any extra effort. It goes onto their web. It's, it's world renowned and people will send you inquiries to book place in your accommodation. And once you've accepted a booking, you don't have to 
you don't have to collect the rental like you do in the traditional old school, old economy thinking lease yeah. agreement where you have a tenant on a month to month basis or a tenant on a one year lease. You don't have to collect the rental. Airbnb does that for you. So the day right. after the guest arrives, Airbnb pays you your fee less their 3% commission, which is nothing. Who out there in this time collects rental for 3%? Nobody. Nobody. Yeah, not that I know of. Uh, I mean, when yeah. we were still uh, using agencies, uh, some of my agencies, uh, now I, I now self-manage all of our properties now in the inlands. Uh, but uh, before I took that decision, I think maybe we were just below 12%. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's anything that's, between eight anything between eight to 12 yeah yeah so that's a, that's like a super savings day if you're doing it for three percent right um, yeah. and the reason why i love airbnb is seeing that we're now talking about collection of monies yeah uh, if you look at the other booking platforms out there there are oh, airbnb is not the only one there's many 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 others sure. but they charge anything between 15 and 20 percent booking oh. fee commission so Airbnb's 3% is really very, very attractive. Uh, okay, it makes sense. Let's go back, Karen. Let's go back to your first listing, right? This is 2013, so um, you, you have no training whatsoever. So you start now trying to figure it out and you were taking pictures that were very bad um, and you were posting them up onto Airbnb. Um, in your mind, when you were, when you were uh, doing this, um, uh, yes, we have now defined that the, you, you knew that there could be some money for, for, for that. Was the idea in your mind, I'm going to make money? Or it was about seeing or meeting people from other worlds? What, what was your reason of going into Airbnb as a hobby? Because it almost sounds like you started off as a hobby. Yes. So you're just trying it, it out. Did. It did. It started off, the primary reason was just to make a few extra bucks. I didn't yeah. expect it to grow into anything big. And even if I did, I wouldn't have had any idea how to grow it into what it is today. It is something that just evolved. It's, it wasn't in my game plan in the early days. Right. So it started off as the main reason, making a few bucks. And then it became about the people because I love traveling and right. then second best thing after traveling yourself is hosting travelers in your home mm. and I mean, they're bringing so in the story friends. into your house right they do and you make so many friends I mean I have friends all over the world today thanks to Airbnb I have um, one of my guests invited me to their wedding in France two years ago Really, and there and there I was off to the off to Europe, and I created. Of <laughs> course, you can't just go to France for a wedding; you have to build a holiday out of it. Of course, yes. So, so yes, and that gave me the opportunity to go and visit other Airbnb friends that I've made in Europe. Um, yeah. And yeah, I know it's great, but that, primarily side, it started off wanting to make a few bucks. Okay, side benefits of of your main uh, mainstream. Uh, I mean, this is now totally unexpected uh, things that you're now having benef side benefits of. Uh, yeah, I think I need to find something about what's your side benefits of the unexpected. Because uh, I'm sure we, there's lots of people now that now have uh, a lot of these side benefits. That's interesting. Yeah. Yes, um, no, definitely. Hmm. So if we were to go back, um, and, and the reason why I am wanting to cover around your 2013 experience in terms of, I know we're 2020, it's way over, but you took a leap of faith and you started just practically doing it from reading and almost like copy and paste, right? So you're reading, you're doing, you're reading, you're doing, you're reading, you're doing, but this is a delayed time until you actually start to make some, some money. So now you've listed, right? And you put all the pictures, you've told all the stories that you need to do, and it is now there on the Airbnb. Um, your first experience when you got your first, do you still call them a tenant?
what what do you call them now when they come when yes. when they arrive? Guests. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> you can see I'm, I'm still old school. Yes. Um, yes. So so when when your first guest actually arrives, okay, um, just take me through that those emotions um, from from a current perspective. So you're opening up your house to someone else, a foreigner, a strange, a stranger. Um, mm. Not necessarily foreigner as in a country foreigner, but they're outside your environment. Um, and somebody you don't know, somebody correct. you've never met before. Yes, yes. <clears throat> so it is quite normal to, at first, just be completely like, what do I? What am I going to get? Because you must remember. You don't know what you're going to get as much as the guest doesn't know what he's going to get. So you are both <laughs> equally, equally a little bit nervous. It's a blind date. But, uh, oh, that's such a good way of describing it. I love it. <laughs> yes. Yeah. And, and when you receive somebody in your house that you don't know and they're coming to stay with you, yeah. the feeling that you get is one of, respect because you want to respect their privacy even though they they're coming into your space right. you're very conscious of the fact that you are hosting them in your in your house but you also need to give them their space and their privacy and they right. have the same guests generally have the same feeling you know they walking into your house and they have respect for your space because they know that they're not in their own in their own space they're in your space right. and they show they generally show a lot of respect and sometimes they keep to themselves because they don't know and once you have once you've overcome that barrier that bridge of you know do i interact don't i interact um, you quickly get into the swing of things and and you start talking to people and you start building friendships but i must tell you in the beginning i was very nervous and i thought to myself oh dear um let me lock my bedroom door <laughs> yeah so in the beginning i don't know for how many months i used to lock my bedroom door at night just because I was so ignorant and I didn't know how it worked and I didn't have the confidence that I have now. And I didn't know how much Airbnb puts into the verification of guests. Okay. And I even had friends, I mean, seven years ago, my friends looked at me as if I was crazy and they said things like, Oh, but what if, what if he's an ax murderer? Right. I, I, used, I, I remember saying to one of my friends, what if he's not? Thank goodness I had that attitude because look where I am today. Cool. And today yeah. with the knowledge that I have and the experience, I'm able to transfer that knowledge and experience to my students. And I'm able to tell them, this is what Airbnb does to verify guests. And this is what, how you can go about screening your guests. And I teach that in my workshops. So right. that you are much more comfortable than what I was seven years ago. This is unknown people to you, uh, but they are not unknown to the platform. They've been scrutinized, Correct. verified who they are. So there is some DNA that they have left somewhere, right? And I suppose this is what you're paying your 3% for, for Airbnb to vet that, right? Um, so so I, I, I actually love the security around this because sometimes uh, in my normal business, we fail to do this, right? I mean, with some of the technology that is there, but we fail to do this. Now, there is a, an individual, a guest, I was just about to say a tenant, and a guest who is coming in, and within this guest, they come in with a second guest, right? Um, and how do you define between the two? Because you, does the Airbnb also verify the second person? Um, or are we now holding on, on to the first guest? How, how does that work? 
So Airbnb will verify the main guest and okay. the main guest will remain responsible. And what is also super great is Airbnb is now launching this year. They are launching uh, what they call guest standards criteria. Okay. And so all guests must adhere to that criteria. At the oh. moment, there are criteria and house rules that you set out that they need to adhere to, which right. makes it much easier for you to set expectations. So before they even book your place, you've already made it clear to them what it is that you expect of them and what it is that they can expect from you. So before they even arrive at the front door, there's already that um, there's already that set of understanding um, that that is there between host and guest. But to come back to your question, Airbnb will verify the main guest, and then I take it a step further and I teach my students in the workshop. I right. teach them how to verify the entire group if it's more than one person. In oh, fact, right. I do further verifications on top of what Airbnb does. Yeah. Um, but that's a, that's a whole document that I share in my workshop and I take my students through it and I recommend that they do that for every guest that comes in. And this is just to create uh, safety around you as an individual, your property, and obviously protecting them as well, the guests themselves. Um, because there was a funny story that um, um, one of my pastors was talking about. He was still staying in Cape Town at that time. And he went outside and they were receiving a guest, right? And they had never seen this guest before. Um, and uh, they welcomed, so they, they get to the gate and they welcome him. And there was also a third party was also at the gate. So my pastor just thought, well, uh, this is all the guests. So they all went inside the house as it is, you know, in the traditional, we start greeting each other. How are you? How are you? Yes, great. Nice seeing you. Oh, so you are the join. Okay, great. Right, right. And then to the third person now. And they asked, so how do you fit in? And the guy said, well, I saw you guys opening the gate and you're welcome <laughs> to <everyone." laughs> He was there for a freebie. <laughs> and, and then... It's a beautiful this, story. This is like five, ten minutes later, people are already having tea and, you know, they've been made welcome. <laughs> but it's such an opportune time. Imagine now if you haven't gone through this verification that you're talking about or said party, and it's now maybe on day two, you know, and you're not asking for, for, for payments. Or something like that. <laughs> it's Correct. already too late, isn't it? Correct. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yes, no, I make sure, I make sure that I get everybody's details before they even arrive. Yeah. And it's very important. That is a very important point you're mentioning there. Okay, cool. But you know, okay. after doing it for seven years, you don't yeah. think about it anymore. You, you just do it, it's automatic doing it because it would prevent that from happening. Yeah, good. So let, let's go back now, right? So you've got, you put your first tenant now, you, you, you've gone over the, the butterflies, uh, right? The, the butterflies are gone. Yeah. You're no longer, well, you, 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 you're no longer locking your doors and putting in a security gate and you've got your, 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 your armed uh, AK-47 just in case below your pillow. Uh, so it's now no more life for you now to have guests in your house, right? Um, People have different standards of behavior, right? And it's normal for some to make up, to wake up and make their beds. And it is still normal for some people to wake up and the bed is upside down, right? Uh, later on making it. How do you deal with such kind of individuals? Because we're all normal, right? We're just different in our normality. Um, but how do you deal with that? Well, I, I always respect a guest's privacy. So if he's renting a room in my house, the room is his. Right. And if he decides to make his bed or not, 
that's entirely up to him. Right. Remember, when you run an Airbnb business, you're not running a hotel or a guest house where people are expecting things to be done in a certain way. Mm-hmm. You communicate to your guests what it is that you expect and they will know. For example, I will say to them, and it's entirely up to you, if you want to clean that guy's room every single day and, and make his bed, you can do that. Or if you want to provide a service once a week, you do that, but it's entirely up to you. This is not guest house or or hotel uh, type setups. So in my my particular case, I would say to them, for the ones living in my house, my cleaning lady, her name is so-and-so, she comes on these days and in between, please clean as you go. So they all do their own dishes. They all clean the basin after they've used it in the bathroom. And they all keep things tidy. And if they've made food or they've watched TV or they had a braai, you know, they all clean up after themselves because you've set those expectations, expectations and those boundaries back right yeah. from the start. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. But good. you must always remember that you need to ex- respect their privacy. So if they're renting the room from you, you know, that's, that's their space. And, and don't, don't enter their space unless you've asked permission or they've invited you. Right. What are, in your seven years now um, uh, uh, of hosting, um, I just want us to take it from, from a perspective of <clears throat> you started off and I was thinking that it is difficult to Airbnb. That's what I thought. Um, and um, I think for anyone out there who didn't know what Airbnb is all about, and especially if they're living in South Africa, they, they have seen exactly how difficult it is to host. There's a platform, charges 3%, get a guest, you get paid. It is so difficult to get paid. How easy is that? I think that's freaking amazing. <laughs> it is, it is, it is, it is as easy as that. Yeah, so, so I want us now to go back to a point where you, you now, you're renting out your first, your first spare room, um, and I don't know how many spare rooms you had when you started off. Um, how did you move on to the second one, to the second spare room, and how did you now migrate into an, a property that's not out, that is outside where you are staying? How did that progression okay. take place? So when I became busy with my first room and I was fully booked all the time, I realized that I needed more space. So I moved my study out of the second bedroom and created another area for my study. And I turned the second bedroom back into a bedroom. And it didn't take long before that was Because now you have, you have people coming back. You have repeat work on business, for example, and or they go through the Airbnb platform, whatever is easiest for them. Right. But now you start, now you start having to juggle bookings, and you have a, a, a guest coming, a repeat guest, and you have somebody else wanting to book. So, you know, my calendar started filling up, uh-huh. and and then I decided to to build onto my house. And enlarge the house. Okay. So I added on two more rooms and a bathroom and a little kitchenette or a, a laundry area, and I did some house renovations. Wow. <laughs> and, and then it became fully booked. Yeah. So I needed space in the area because I don't want to now have a property on the opposite side of town and I have to send refer, referral guests or repeat guests to the opposite side of town. So I bought another property in the area, um, a three bedroom apartment. And then I ran out of space there. And you know, it takes a while to buy a property. You have to look for it, um, yeah. spend a lot of time driving around, looking at houses. Then you have to apply for finance and wait for transfer. So it could be a few months before, before you have a property that you can rent out. All right. But fortunately, 
during the time that I was looking for more space, my name was looking for a tenant. So now I'm Airbnb and use the Airbnb platform. Right. Was our connection a bit bad there? You were squeakled. Yeah, okay. no, yeah, carry on. Um, so yeah, that's that's where I that's where I am today. And then of course, because I've been in it for such a long time, um, and there are people who are wanting to Airbnb their places, but they either don't want to do it themselves because they're not sure how to do it. Yeah. Or they just it's just not their thing. They need somebody else to do the back end for them. I've started managing other people's properties for them on Airbnb. And for that, oh. I charge a, a management fee. So, um, so, so it's a nice, I have a nice I've got, portfolio. I've got my property. Yes. Right. Uh, fully furniture. And or, you have a spare room. Right. And, and I just pass it on to you. Yeah, you have a spare room in your house. And you want to get started quickly and you don't want to do all the back end management and screening of guests and replying to inquiries. Yeah. So I do that for you. Um, I let you know when the Okay. Wow. Interesting. I mean, the, how easy can it get? Um, <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm, I am totally amazed. Um, you don't, you don't have to collect, you don't have to collect rental. You don't have to spend money advertising. Uh, you just need to put your listing on Airbnb, make sure you know how to optimize it. And I teach my students how to optimize it, help them to get started quickly. And yeah. that's it. Receive guests. And, and, and if you don't want to do it, boom, there you are. Karen is going to do it for me. Yes. And if you feel you want to have a break or you want to go on holiday and you don't want people around when you're not there or whatever the case is, you just block your calendar and you decide to take a little holiday from, from Airbnb for that period. Wow. Uh, and people say that it is difficult to make money. And... Uh, <laughs> I, I, you just need to know. You just need to know. How. And I know how because I've paid the school fees for seven years, yeah. and I'm now transferring that skill. Right, right. In between, Karen, has there been some? How have you gained more knowledge? Uh, in between, um, uh, has there been some books that you've been reading um, 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 to improve your knowledge? And for you to stay motivated, uh, how, how have you managed to do that as an individual? There are a lot of blogs. I had read any of uh, the book called The Upstarts. And it's written right. by a guy called Brad Stone. The right. Upstarts by Brad Stone. You can either get it in hard copy or it's also available on uh, Audible. Um, you can get it in audiobook format as well. Yeah. And that the Upstarts is not only about Airbnb, it's about Airbnb when they first started. And it is so motivating to read what these guys, the founding members of Airbnb, what they had been through right. right in the beginning when they were setting up this business. It was not all smooth sailing. And what they had gone through to bring us the opportunity today to make money out of a spare room or a whole house or a beach house or whatever accommodation it is that you have. It's really, truly really inspiring to see and to read that. Mm. Um, for a novice person who's never mm. done this, never heard of it, and they are like, 
yo, this Airbnb is cool. I want you to do it because they were just listening in the last 30 minutes. What would you say, what are the three steps or tips that you can give that individual that this is the way you to start and you can almost guarantee a return on, on, on their effort that it, it will become money as opposed to six months to maybe 24 hours. Um, novice, irrespective of where they're, they're staying, what did you say? Uh, a cave, a boat, a spare room, uh, or whatever. A whole house, whatever. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> What's your tip? So I have um, information evenings that I do. They are free presentations, and I do them all over the country. Right. I am going to do them online. So if those who want to attend them online can keep a, an eye on my Facebook page. My Facebook page is Smart Stay Pro. Okay. Keep an eye on there. I'm going to launch the online free information events very soon within the next um, week or 10 days. Right. And that's where you can get more information. And that's where I go into a lot of detail and I'll show you practical numbers and I'll show you how you can use the income that you generate from Airbnb to pay your bond off in half the time that it would normally take you, as an right. example. Okay. Um, and if after that you think that, that this is something you want to consider seriously and you be, want to become a serious Airbnb host, then I offer these one-day workshops. I really help you to build an Airbnb business in one day. So I give you a bit of homework. You come to the workshop and it's a whole day, whole day workshop and I hold your hand and I make sure that by the end of that day, you have got an Airbnb business and you are ready to, to receive guests. It is a very intense workshop. I cover a lot. There is, there's no upsell after the workshop. I don't tell you, okay, this is now the basics, but, but if you want to become serious, then there's another workshop that's, that you can um, enroll for. One day and you will have an Airbnb business. And uh, if you have a look at my website, smartstaypro.com, you can see some of the um, success stories of people who have done the workshop and have reaped the benefits from, from building a, an Airbnb business in a day. And if you are an existing host and you are not maybe making as much as you want or as, as much as you can, Plenty of existing hosts have done this workshop and they've seen the benefits afterwards. Mm. Okay. So I need a room, some form of accommodation that Correct. I that I have control of. I don't need to own it. Correct. Right. Uh, that's number one, requirement number one. That you have access to. Right. Great. And number because two. Because the new economy is all about having access. Mm, that's it that's it yeah yeah it's not about owning assets uber doesn't own the assets but they have access to it and the same with airbnb and the same with you as a host you don't need to own the assets but you have to have access to it right so requirement number one access to some form of accommodation that you've got and i mean you have broken down some ridiculous ones that i didn't think about we've got so many kids out here in the west um that I'm thinking now to go and uh, confiscate and uh, maybe I can make some money out of it. <laughs> uh, so that's, that's requirement number one. Requirement number two, um, you need some form of technology in terms of a laptop, uh, maybe uh, a tablet so that you can access the platform with the Airbnb. Am I correct? You can access it on your smartphone. Oh, nice, nice. Um, yes. You can build you can build it on your smartphone. It is better if you if you have a laptop or a tablet because it's easier when you set it up initially. Um, just because the screen is bigger and you can type better on a on a laptop, yeah. but it's perfectly possible to do it from a smartphone. Wow! And so that's um, the second second thing. Yes, you're right. Right, and then the third thing is I just need to have an open mind that. I can receive guests in my house, give them some privacy, and out of that, I've got cha-ching on the table. Correct. 
how easy that is the new economy thinking wow. that is the new economy thinking we're not in the old economy anymore so we need to make that mind shift um, into having access to assets and buying into the sharing economy yeah what currently we, we're just concluding here what was your biggest if you look back in your seven years what has been the biggest shift that has helped you to carry your business from a spare room to the portfolio that you now have with a mix of property that you're managing property that you own property that you're renting and that's a widespread um and at the moment if i understand you very well your work is on a laptop so you're not restricted in terms of geography where you are um correct you accept uh, guests and they come in i'm sure you've got a system around that uh, how they come in and go you've got you've created employment for others you speak of the helpers that you've got so i'm sure you have them everywhere in your properties you don't need to be physically at a job and you're still earning some money i mean that's an amazing position to be in um what was the biggest shift how, how do you get to to get to that position um yeah the biggest shift for me happened when i educated and i invested in educating myself right and i got myself a business coach right. and i said this is what i have i have traditional long-term rentals at the moment and then i have a property consulting business and then i do airbnb and we analyzed it and my coach helped me to put a plan in place to get me where i am today uh, and it is through that it is through that that the work involved where i'm now teaching other people how to do that when i appointed a coach and i took on i invested in my own education wow education is power that, once that was invented. that was the turning point that was the turning point for me right and everything else has been uh implement 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 i'm sure you implement every day correct wow currently it's been you yeah go ahead now i think we had a bit of a delay on the line it's good you can carry on right so so karen has been great speaking to you um you got a an interesting story from port elizabeth uh to johannesburg to mozambique to um yeah all of these other places uh lunching and uh sipping some wine in france um meeting interesting people who come from all over the world and you creating accommodation for them and now you're making some money out of it the stats that you drop for me it's amazing minimum wage in south africa is mm -hmm. not about three four thousand uh yeah. but minimum income per host is around about thirty thousand right uh and this can all be achieved by just having access to a room or should i say access to accommodation elsewhere so you can literally change your life if you know how to manage these things and education for you did it and um i'm always hammering drummering around the education to say hey guys there's nothing that beats education it is no longer about going to university uh there's plenty of education out there that you can get on a weekend on a one day and it can change your life you have demonstrated that today so thank you for your time uh, I know that it is uh, not an air, early rising for you, but I now need to go to the gym now. Um, so thank you very much for your time, yeah. Karen. Um, any closing comments from your side? Not much from my side, just to say thank you. It was great chatting to you this morning. And uh, I've placed an order for your book. Can't wait to get my hands on that because we need to keep educating ourselves. And I like to learn from you. And I'm sure there's plenty that I can learn from you. So I look forward to reading your book. Um, thanks for having me and enjoy the gym.
Thanks, Karen. Um, there's a guy that started off um, a, a musical school, uh, and he said something profound the other day. They were at the, they were interviewing him from Germany. I can't remember his name, but he's an African guy. Um, and he was talking about. So I think he was canvassing for money uh, in 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 Europe uh, in terms of making it bigger. Uh, and they asked him that why, what what kind of a school is it, and why did it start? It? And because he's a veteran in his music, he said, I started this because I realized that there were so many people with talents. And with our talents, my school is very different because you come in, into the school, we give you the basics on how to do it, but the idea is that you teach us. Because in the world, God did not create double people. He created people with a unique thing, and because of that unique thing, that's the one that we want to approach so that you can all teach us. And when we are all taught from your skill, the world can become a better place. So I like the fact that you, you recognize that in each and every one individual out there, there's something that you can learn. And I think that is something that people sometimes we lose when we are getting up and up in the, on the ladder of life. So thank you very much for that. Yes, the book yeah. is coming a um, couple of more weeks. I think three weeks' time, it should be out. So thank you very much. Well, Karen, Fraser, um, thank you very much for coming through. It's okay. been awesome coming through to Empire Successful Friends. Guys, uh, you had it. It is so easy to make money on Airbnb. If Karen is doing it, she is no different um, from any one of us. I'm sure we could all make some money out of it. Karen, thanks a lot for your time and good luck with your endeavor. And um, Empire Successful Friends, you had it. You, if you were thinking that I brought Karen as my friend only, no, you had that she's a successful uh, person in her own right, killing it in the same space that we are all doing business. She's doing business or property slightly different. And uh, you can see or you can check out your websites. They are in the comments. Have a look if you're thinking that Airbnb is one of those things you want to do. But for me, over and out, God bless. Goodbye.